community and in the society at large. A, let's move on to another keyword. Beloved, let's take another text. He says, prosper. prosper. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may what? Prosper. Prosper. That means? To succeed. Prosper means? To get ahead in life. When John, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, Beloved, I want you to prosper. He meant? To do well. And to? Enjoy living good. That is right. So, the church. In another chapter in the same book here, I, I discuss this matter about prosperity. Because sometimes we Christians are caught up with an arm of the gospel preached by the gospel. If we're not careful to shun the wrong dogmas of prosperity gospel, we tend to forget that God expects his children to prosper, to do well. It's a bad way. I hope I'm not going to get myself in trouble. But nothing is wrong with a child of God having a very big, nice house. Nothing is wrong with right driving a 2023 new, name it, Ferrari, or name it, yeah, nothing's wrong. Nothing is wrong with having a very healthy bank account. Nothing's wrong. What is wrong is that the Christian who amasses wealth, he or she cloaks the wealth on him mm -hmm. and do not use the wealth for the well-being of those in his or her sphere of influence. That's the purpose of God blessing us. And so, prosper to help others, to build up the kingdom that's going, getting ahead. So nothing's wrong. And by the way, may I just make a, a, a quick call? If there's anybody out there who has some money, money and say, <laughs> I can talk with you afterwards. All right. Yes, because I wouldn't mind getting some real help. Yes, to push this ministry. So if you are impressed and I'm stressed about it, that this sounds like something you'd want to identify with, and brothers and sisters, there's room for involvement. Amen. So there's prosper. Let's take another look at another word in the deck. Here it comes now. What's the word? Health. What do we mean by health? Here we have it. How about physical health? Mental, Mental and emotional health. We talk about social health. Mm -hmm. Hey! Financial, Financial health. Financial health. <coughs> well, if, if there's one that I think we could do well to grow in Delhi, is this one. Financial but the health. truth is, my brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. When the Lord inspires, illuminates the apostle to talk about the health, he was not limiting that to the state and function of the body. So, he says, I wanted to prosper and be in health. Next word. Even. Even. Mm. Now, let's do a little English. The word even. What part of speech is it? First of all, It's a simile, as you rightly said there. It's a simile. It's making comparison. Not a little bit. It means, are you still there? Am I coming clear? Are you hearing me? Yes. Good. It means equal. equally. It also when it says even, it means to the, to same, the same extent. extent. Just, just like. In, in the, the same, same way. way. Wow. What? Put, Put it, it together, together now. Want you to prosper and be in health equally mm -hmm. to the same extent, mm -hmm. just like in the same way. That's <laughs> Next key word. That's soul. soul. So wait a minute. Let's 
Sunarad. It means when it says I want you to prosper as thy soul prospered, it means you are doing well, you are prospering in your spirituality. That's right. You are doing well in your heart relationship, in your connection with God, in your being a good healthy church membership. You're doing well. You're prospering in your evangelistic life. In your evangelizing. Mm -hmm. Come on now. So when the apostle says, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospering. Let me say something here. He was speaking with an by virtue of being member of the beloved of God's family the assumption the expectation is because you're a member of God's church that you are already prospering spiritually in your relationship with God in your church membership you're prospering as an, in your evangelistic life. Bad way, bad way, bad way. Remember, your evangelistic life begins behind closed doors at your home. Dolores must be convinced, must see evidence in me and Sonny that I am a serious practicing Christian. Amen. That's my first evangelism. I must be able to testify that the Lord is, is serious about our soul salvation. Our children, who, as they grew up, they were supposed to be able and still to do it today to say to the world, world, my mother, my father, they are genuine, real Christian. That's evangelism at home. And then it spreads like a ripple effect into the church. No. And yeah. then into the society. And then into the society. Yeah. And, and to the world at large. Okay. Jerusalem and Samaria and all with okay. us another presentation. <laughs> okay. So when we prosper in our soul, in our relationship with God, then God says, Well, don't anybody say to you, Oh, you know, we just want to, to prosper spiritually. The Lord said, ah, ah, ah. Oh, As okay. long as you live on earth. Prosper in health, prosper in material thing, but make sure you are prospering equally in health. Now the word soul, there are some persons who have a misconception of the word soul. So let's spend a little time with that. In the names of soul. First of all, in the King James Version, the word mind Appears 99 and it's that appearance makes reference to the mind. Another one is the word heart. Give your heart to the Lord, turn your heart to the Lord. It's not talking about that pear shaped organ behind your sternum in your thoracic cage, it's talking about. You are minded. But there are certain uh, connotations that mind carries different from heart. And I emphasize them and extrapolate them in the book called soul. Another word that the bad uses is for soul, or for soul itself, appears 473 times in the Old King James Version, which is my version of the Bible. And heart appears 823. Another word is spirit. Appears 464. And look at this one. Conscience. Conscience. So all of these and more are synonyms of the soul representing various aspects of our intelligence. Intelligence built that. Amen. All right. So when the Bible says, I want you to prosper in health, yes. it was not.
not talking about just one aspect. In fact, let's take another angle text to bring it out. Um, Psalm 139 verse 14. And this is David now. David says, man, I, I will make... praise thee. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop. Let's open up this text in the context of David was under inspiration and he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Just to you, that under inspiration, David was alluding to his physiological. And he said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He was talking about his body. Listen, church, you and I know that this body is the most marvelous, mysterious anything since creation. No moon, no Jupiter, no constellation, no Milky Way can come in. It's infinitesimally close to the marvel of the body. David never stopped there because the Holy Spirit did not make him stop. He went on to say, Marvelous are thy that works. And that, and that my, my soul, there comes the word again, and that my soul no, if right well question with what aspect of your being do you know with do you know with your hand with your feet with your genitals with your stomach no you know with your active sound mind. So when David says, and that my soul knoweth right, well, he was alluding to his psychological health. And so, if you notice on my screen, what I have there is that the body and the mind makes the composite human being. Now, Let's talk a little now. Health, some more. I'm going to introduce to you now main mix of health. Remember the question earlier? When somebody asks you, who is your health? Well, first of all, number one, there is our physiological health which means the state and function of the body physically mm -hmm. now let me quickly say this i don't have the time to extrapolate all of these i'm just doing a quick introduction our physical health is not the same as our physiological health let me explain quickly mm -hmm. but doctor maybe there are some medical doctors and nurses on set into your field a little. When we talk about how you are physically, we're talking about that which you're seeing. Oh, you look nice, man. Wow. You look nice, strong, healthy, robust. Yes. Physically. But physiologically is talking about how your body is functioning, both internally, which you're not seeing, and externally, which you're seeing. So you're seeing my hand moving, you're seeing my eyes, you're coordinating, but you don't know if my lungs is taking in the right proportion of air. You don't know if my kidney is filtering right. That's our physiological health. That's what David was alluding to when he said, I fearfully and wonderful in it. So let's run this quickly now. So our physiological health talks about the state and function of the body physically, anatomically, which means the various hormonally, the various hormones in the body, chemical, and neurologically. Now in the medical, all of these are broken down into various specialities. So we have a doctor who specializes in hair, yes, and one who specializes in toes, that's right, 
Hi, Connie. But I want to share yeah, something to you. Me. Remember this. When you go to the medical facility, the, trial, the, 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 the clinic, the nurse at triage checks your vital signs. There are four vital signs that are Even now, in COVID time, your temperature, your respiratory, your heartbeat, or your blood pressure. These are the four physiological health, which is the state and function of the body. But listen to this. To this extent. Just a question before you go. Is your computer plugged? Uh, I, 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 is your computer is your computer plugged in? Is the um, power okay? You're getting yeah, a slight. Are, are you having a challenge? Are you seeing? Yeah, we're seeing, but you're getting a slight dropping in the in the audio sometimes. Oh well, no, that has nothing to do really with the, with the power supply. It might be the fluctuation in the uh, in the transmission. Okay, all right. But otherwise, yes. we're, we're getting the, the gist. Go ahead. So you're losing some things, is that correct? Not, not very much, just slightly. Oh, okay. right. It, it has to do with the the, uh, the fluctuation sometimes of the transmission. That's, okay, thank you very much for the observation. So I can continue. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we were at the point of saying that to the same extent that the, the, the absence of war does not necessarily mean that there is peace. Uh -huh. So it is that the absence or apparent absence of physiological illness or infirmity does not necessarily mean yeah. that the person is totally healthy because there's another aspect of health that as a mainstream society we do not pay equal attention to and that is our psychological health which is the state and function of the mind but not just mind but the active sound mind there's a world of difference there not even before i open up this some more there's a stigma in society once somebody says the mind <laughs> are you saying something is wrong with me and there's a bad word Permit me, those of you international, there is a word that is in our society, it doesn't go down well. <laughs> gently. And the word is counseling. Oh dear. So, so you need counseling. You need to go see the counselor. <laughs> and immediately the person says, Are you thinking that something is wrong with my head? I'm not going to see any counselor. And so, my brothers and sisters, now that brings me to explain to you. My practice, family, relational health, treating relationships the healthy way. If you'll notice that I am balancing the care of the body, physiological health, with the care of the mind, psychological health, meaning the state and function of the mind. Odell? Spiritually. Wait a minute. Some good Christians might have a little struggle here. So, what does spirituality have to do with mind? Oh, everything. It does? Yes. Well, wait a minute. Hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walking in turn to the left. Let me remind you, my brothers and sisters, that's the Holy Spirit communicating with you through your mind. In another session, I won't have the time for that, I'll explain for you the difference between the mind 
and the brain. While there is a complementary working, there is also differentiation. Okay, you might have lost my video a while ago, did you? Yeah, for, you for a while you, you were. Good. Now let's continue. So, our psychological health has to do with the state and function of the mind spiritually, also mentally, socially, emotionally, and, hello, <laughs> relationally. <laughs> Plane is landing. Yeah, right. Relation. Oh, relational health. Oh, but we've been hearing about mental health and mental illness. But how do you get relational health in this? Grace of God. Let's keep a prayer in our hearts and look at this. Now, listen. Over my nearly 40 years of practice, in my family relational health lab, both in my home, both in my private practice, and as I travel the world, I have developed four parallel vital signs of the active sound mind, paralleling them with the body. So when you go to triage, you remember those four vital signs that the nurse checks. And by the way, when you're going to see the medical doctor, he or she looks at those vital signs and he says, mm -hmm. and depending on the reading, he might ask you some questions, he or, he or she might ask the question, even before even sounding you are doing anything, just by looking at your vital signs. Now, are there vital signs for the state and function of the active sound relational mind? Yes. Four of them that I've developed. Number one, connection. Now I want you, my fellow husbands and wives, <laughs> on grand marriage, single, divorce, whoever you are, as long as you're a human being, alive and well in your sound mind, Check your vital signs. Number one, connection. It's the graphic. The two M-I-N-D-S. Yes? Now is a question. On a scale of one to ten, as you'll see there, in your mind, how strong, how established, how sustained is the connection between your two minds. Is it weak? That means on the scale you said, to be honest with you, when I think about how I connect with him or her, I think it on a scale of one to ten, it might just be about three or two, maybe four. Or or we connect. I think we're connecting at about seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh. You have got to scan your mind. Hey, medical. You got to x-ray your mind with the infusion of the Holy Spirit. When you're honest, how is the connection in your active sound mind between you and him, you and her, you and them? But that's just one of the vital signs. The second vital sign is rapport. When you sang the song, that word came up. Rapport. If you study the graphic for the rapport, you'll notice that one is speaking, the other is hearing or listening. Question is, how mutually beneficial is the rapport? Between you and me, Delores, when I speak with you or to you, because by the way, there's a difference there, with speaking with your family member and speaking to your family member. 
do we mutually benefit or is it one way? That's another vital sign. And by the way, these vital signs, they add details as to how we test them and evaluate them and convert them extensively in the same way. Third vital sign. Okay, you want that. Bond. 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 Yes. No. What's that? <laughs> the glue. The tie. Notice carefully. You cannot bond if you're not connected. You cannot have a healthy rapport if you're not connected. And you cannot have an emotional bond. Wait a minute. What did I say? Emotional. Emotional bond? But you don't have any wait, 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 wait. <laughs> emotional bond. But Dr. Gordon, people have to be careful, you know. We must not be emotional, you know. And especially us men. I am not emotional, you know. You're too emotional. My brother, my sister, let me say this to you. If ever you have been talking like that, pray to God for forgiveness and stop it this evening. <laughs> Your emotion, as Del just said, is a special gift from God to help you bind and tie and knit. Yes, for those of you who are of psychological background, this is where we talk about the affective domain. The connection is in the cognitive domain, which means you are knowledgeable. I know he's my husband. I know she's my brother. I know he's my church member. I know it. I'm aware of it. Of course, I know. But you're knowing, you're acknowledging him or her does not necessarily say you have a healthy rapport. And as for that feeling, oh, some of those, man, this feeling thing, you know, this feeling thing, you know. Beloved, that's an insult to the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit himself groans. He feels. Because he invests us with our emotions so we learn to bond healthily. That's the third vital sign. Check your vital sign. And that will give you a cue as to the state, the quality of your relational health. I said four. There's a fourth vital sign. Just the same way there are four of physiological health. In my practice, by the way, you will not see these anywhere else in the world. And these are totally and completely unique to my practice over these decades in family relational health. Mm -hmm. What vital sign is there? Support. Support. Now, in mainstream society, when we say we're supporting somebody, generally, we mean we give them something. We say, all right, your parents are not supporting you, so here, see your support money. I give you a car. Support you. Doctor, teacher, I support. is not to be limited to material. What we're talking about is all unreservedly available 24 7 uh, is the support meaning your husband your wife your cousin your sister your brother any family member your co-worker your friend is a thousand miles away from you and he or she feels a need yes and calls you 100 o'clock in the night yes when you're in your deepest sleep but he or she calls you because he knows that although you're going to yawn and oh man, I am being Muslim. Wait a minute. John, is that you? Are you okay? Are you okay? And the moment you respond like that to him or her, immediately calms him or her down, regardless of the situation, because ah, you're there for me. I can feel your support. Let's move on. So or vital sign. Let me show you something else. It is a law. The foundation law of family relational health. The 
again, you will not see this anywhere else in the world. The law that I have written states, and you're reading it, by the way, hey, let's take a break. Let somebody read it. Would somebody read that for me? What is that law? What does it say? Beginning with all. Somebody un unmute your mic and read this law for me, please. If all, re all human relationships begin with continuing to exist in the mind. <laughs> Thank you. Let me read it again for you in slow motion. Listen to what you just read. Listen to what you see. All human relationships begin and continue to exist in the mind. Ah, we mean by that? Well, let's begin with the first relationship that, that God established. What's it? Marriage. The marriage relationship. What do you mean by saying it's in mind? Well, let me ask you, dear husband, dear wife, you're seated there, wherever you are, and for some reason, your wife, your husband, is not where you are. So you're going to be my lab. You're going to be my, my test for this evening. For no one speaking to. So your wife, your husband is not there with you. All right, let's begin. So, your wife, your husband, the person to whom you're married is not there beside you. He, he or she is where he or she is. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> so, your wife, your husband is not here beside you. He or she is there. Ready now? Where? is your marriage. I hear your mind sticking away. Let me quickly tell you, as you probably by know by now, your marriage is not where your wife or your husband is. Your marriage is in your mind. <laughs> it's the name of the relationship that connects you with him or her. Delores and I are married, God willing, this year, 47 years. Whoa. I'd like all of you husbands and wives to put in your figure. So, the marriage relationship is in the marriage. And the relationship exists in your mind determines how you relate with your husband or your wife. The same and identical principle has to do with parenting. So the parent relationship is in the mind. The sibling relationship, the familial relationship, cousin, aunt, uncle, grands, name them. In my book, I've identified 68 categories of family relationships on page 466 onward. All these familial relationships, then collegial relationship with those you work with, you study with, business relationship, social relationship. When human being exists where he or she is, the relationship between you and him, that relationship is in your mind. Based on the way that relationship exists in your mind, that determines how you relate with him or her. Mm -hmm. Relational health. And that is why it is rightly said the mind is, is the, the engine. engine. Uh -huh. in, it's what drives us. What is relationship? Again, relationship. you will not see this definition of relationship anywhere. All that I share with you, my brothers and sisters, these are years of research. 
nine books we have published so far. And these last two are the most recent. So what is relationship? Relationship is a process of engaging one mind with or against another mind. Is that with or against? Open it up. Let's see what we're talking about. When you say, I am in a relationship, well, no, let's, we are, let's take our lab. We are in a relationship. Correct. Because our minds are with each other. I just quickly scan my mind. <laughs> Thank God. I cannot find anybody who's where, where my mind is against that person. Let me share something with you. There are times I hear people say, Oh, me? I'm not in any relationship with him. I'm in no relationship with her. Me, my brother, my sister, as a therapist, as a counseling psychologist, a Christian one, let me say this to you. That very statement is a sign of pain and hurt. It is suggesting that the person is very well in mind, but not with it's painful. So it's against. So mm -hmm. I'm not in any relationship with him or her. Not true. You are. But it is not healthy. So you cannot healthily interact uh -huh, with him or her. So it's painful. Yes. You cannot interrelate. And notice my arrows. There's a reciprocity. That's why the second value sign is rapport. Because rapport means relating reciprocally. My mind, you to me, and me to you. Healthy relationship. Our sound minds. So the communication is not going through. That is correct. And that is why it will not be with and that's why we hear so much complaints about communication. That is correct. In relation. Oh, yes. Oh, Dr. Gordon, we're not communicating. As a Some of the issues as I begin to diagnose. Well, you know, yeah, we're not. That's a big C. So it's not only coronavirus is a big C. And it's not only cancer is a big C. But in my practice as a psychologist, the big C is communication. suggesting to you this evening but is that we need balance balance in our lives balance between our physiological health in other words don't pay all your attention to your body but equally balance it with the state of your mind Amen. the rapport the connection because let me something. In another presentation, I'll, if I do, that is sorry. Um, if I ever do, I will talk. I could probably talk about psychosomatic health and psychosomatic illness and relational illness. Because the same way there's mental illness, there is relational illness, psychosomatic health, which means the power of the mind over the body. My brothers and sisters, God would have his children pay equal attention to both aspects of their health because our preparation for heaven means that we will come as close as possible to Luke chapter 2 verse 52 when the medical doctor Luke gave Jesus a clean bill of health when he said, and Jesus advanced in wisdom, that's intelligence, and stature, that's physical, that's his body, and in 
favor with God, that's spiritual, huh. and in favor with <clears throat> man, social. <clears throat> Jesus <throat> is our epitome example. Balanced health. Now, church, I'm going to stop here. Uh, there are so much more I could talk with you about the crisis in relational health because of what is happening. Even that, I will stop sharing to, you know, to respond, participate, any questions, any treating relationships the healthy way. Okay. Uh, uh, host, over to you, if there are Amen, amen. Amen, amen. That, that was such a beautiful breakdown. We are blessed. Um, and as you say, just to introduce, well, that's a whole lot of skills. Yes. To, you know, that I've seen exhibited there. And so, um, <clears throat> it is clear that um, what you have introduced this evening is is from the word of God is foundational is biblical that is how God would have it I mean as you say the medical uh, the medical part uh, we have and we understand but that psychological aspect that flair we we were lacking, and we need to know that to um, deal with them one by one. Hon, what your, what's your take? Oh my goodness, I was just um, blown away by the presentation because it's so unique. Yes. And it approaches things in a, in a very scientific, but illustrative and it, it can be easily assimilated, even though it's so scientific. And um, I'm really, really impressed by the, the entire, you know, presentation. And the substance yes. is, is, is great. So it was really a marvelous insight into how the body and the mind works. Yes. I'm All right, grateful. let's open to the floor and see what we have. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're ready to take the first step. Okay. I could go ahead? Sure. Yep, brother, yes, go you ahead. Know, yeah, my name is Ralph. I'm so happy to hear the presentation, but you know, it's a little bit, a little bit to whet the appetite. So what I am saying right now, the easiest part for me is to get them books where you have so I could go into the books and uh, because I might ask a question but the books and them may give me some answers. So how could I get in contact with you? Oh you can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble those bookstores have it. I want to get in contact with you, my sister and my brother. How could I get in contact with you and your husband? Oh. <laughs> now that's a different story. Uh, so first of all, the books are available online. Yeah. Uh, you just Barnes and Noble or Amazon. You purchase them online. They send it to you. In terms of contacting us, we will put our contact in the chat, our number, because uh, we do operate, as I said, professionally. So we have clients, we actually have a, an online therapy. We have scores of clients from around the world who are due to come in for their therapy sessions each time based on how we operate. So uh, we're going to put the, the chat, our connect, and uh, in terms of our, our can they contact directly by uh, 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 email. So thank you, my brother. We'll okay. And momentarily. I get no. that. Great. Thanks very much for the presentation. Great presentation. Don't stop. Keep on praying and pray for me too. Oh, okay. thank you, my brother. And let me say something to you on that note. Um, I want to challenge my brothers and sisters listening. Whenever. If you.
you say yes, you must understand that it's a commitment you make with God. It is not to be trivialized. Oh, yes, I pray for you. Because so easy ask, oh, yes, I pray for you. But it's a commitment. And so, my brother, I can assure you, what we do, we do uh, make this commitment. And by God's grace, when we're praying, even if we did not know the name or remember you, we can make a commitment to God. Lord, I made a commitment. I'm going to lift up my brother. Holy Spirit, find him where he is. Find her. Impress him. Let her know that he or she is being prayed for. So, my brother, I'm assuring you by God's grace. Number and email go. We are lifting you. Thank you so much for that question. If mm -hmm. there's anyone else, go ahead, please. I have a question. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Yes, I may have missed a little uh, and I may have overlooked it. Uh, I would like to hear what you have to say regarding the hypothalamus gland in relation to your topic of health and relationships and the role of the hypothalamus uh, and what a person perhaps needs to do to. Uh, of course, have healthy organs altogether, but I think the hypothalamus has a, a role to play, this very small gland in the brain. I'd like to hear you relate to that. Okay. Well, first of all, let me declare up front, I am not a medical doctor. I'm yes, a psychologist. I practice psychotherapy, and in order for me to be averse and knowledgeable, I have to understand certain medical principles and practices. But no answer I give is of a medical nature because I'm not a medical doctor. Now, let me say here that, um, may I just ask you, dear sister, I appreciate your question. Um, are you asking it from a medical perspective based on your own practice or your field? May I just let me connect with you a little more? Oh, yes. Yes, that's perfectly all right. I, I, I'm asking, asking it based on a similar topic uh, in a Adventist literature, of course, some 15 years and years ago. This mm -hmm. particular gland, I'm asking the question in relation to its effect on the person's behavior, their emotions. Uh, as a matter of fact, it has been related to as it can be that little part of the brain that's called the devil's workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, so it would not be in a medical aspect, but you good. know how the medical Very good. Thank links, you. links with Thank the you. physical. Thank you. Let me yes. say it this way. There is a term that we know in psychiatric practice and in psychology referred to as chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. in, in most instances, when a person is diagnosed with a mental illness, you will hear in a that general term, he has a chemical imbalance. Let me explain in essence what that is. It means that there's a malfunctionality in the brain and or the glandular system as the glands, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the various other glands, the endocrine glands and the others, where they are not functioning optimally and the chemical ah thank you lord you notice i did say in our physiological health if you missed the part we're talking about the state and function of the body physiologically part of which is chemically optimally and neurologically now when these various glands are not functioning optimally Either because there has been physiological damage, sometimes congenitally, which means you were born with them damaged, 
or developmentally, which means that something happened, either nutritionally, uh, drug-wise, something damaged those glands, then the hormones, the chemicals that God designed them to produce, mm -hmm. are not produced in a balanced way and have effect on the brain and as a result, the emotions are impaired. So, a person can behave out of kilter. That is to say, not right. Sometimes, and sometimes, lay persons will brand a person bad or, you know, crazy. We use those terms to curse the person. When in truth, the person's physiology, chemically or hormonally, is not functioning at optimum. Let me bring you bad news. None of us, <laughs> none of us are functioning optimally. But thanks be to God, not all are at the same degree. So dear sister, in summary, that particular gland you're talking about, including others, the hormones that they produce that are released in the bloodstream that affects certain sections of the brain, if those hormones are not being produced at the right level at the right time, it will impact behavior because mm -hmm. Our behaviors are influenced by the brain. Now, the brain, God made it with over 300 billion brain cells. And there are mm -hmm. functionality. In fact, the brain is the most complex of our existence. Amen. So, my dear sister, thank you for the question. Whether it's the hypothalamus, any of the others there, Including, for example, let me bring in another one, the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. We are not functioning correctly. Our behavior, including relationships, can be impaired. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Bless you, mm -hmm. sister. Thank you for the question. Thank you. All right. What's this, the Carmen's hand? Is she still oh, there? sister, uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, to the question that I was going to ask, because mm -hmm. the lady is not a medical doctor, so I was going to ask me, um, what if something happened, like a person or mind functioning not properly, just like when you go to the doctor and you have to do your vital signs, and then you go to the doctor for him to diagnose, mm -hmm. if he knows um, things that are happening to your brain, uh, you should share. I'm sorry, I missed a part of your question, just like sometimes it goes uh, a little low. Would you run it again for me, please? Thank you. As said, you have said that you're not a medical doctor. I was going Correct. to ask, um, because you brought in the, um, the vital signs. Yes. And what are checked to see if you were balancing or if you were not in line in order to go to the doctor for the diag doctor to, to um, diagnose your case. Mm -hmm. So what if my mind is impaired, meaning that I'm not functioning, it's not functioning because mm -hmm. I'm in, um, having a good relationship, I'm not connecting and not bonding. Right. And also in a relationship, do you have rules for the individual? Do I have? Do anything to help individuals okay. who are suffering from from their mind with their okay uh, I'm, I'm sorry that they keep breaking up but i think i got the essence of your question let me answer it this way medical doctors whose training has to do with treating the physiology of our being they need to coordinate, and so many do, with other professionals 
who treat other aspects of our existence. I can tell you this for sure. And from time to time, based on my diagnosis of the case I'm working with, I refer clients to medical doctors. And too many times, so many times, medical doctors refer cases to me for treatment. Let me share an example with your sister. Thank you for your question. There are many times persons are hurting in their B-O-D-Y. They can't digest, can't sleep well, and we've got pain here, da 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 name it. And the first recourse is to go to the medical doctor. The medical doctor is ethically responsible to do all the necessary uh, evaluation, examination, and as much as is professional and clinically within his or her power to diagnose, prescribe, and treat with prognosis. That is to say, based on what I'm treating him for, this medication, if you take it, so-and-so, by so-and-so, da-da-da-da-da. Now, sister, brother, there have been times, repeated times, when all the tests, all the ologies and the oscopies and the scans and the MRIs come back, amen, negative. Yeah, if I but uh, I still am feeling the pain. I, I don't know what. I can't. And if that medical doctor is competent and experienced and does not, I'm going to say something now, and does not feel the need to rush on to the next patient, he or she might say to this patient, all right, sit down a little. Let me talk with you. Tell me something. Um, uh, are you married? Um, do you have children? Uh, where do you work? What do you do? With your neighbors? And sometimes one of those questions trigger off the pain. The person says, ah, oh, Doctor, as you mentioned that, and I, Doctor, I can't touch that. I don't want to talk anything up. <laughs> doctor, the medical doctor, will a light bulb will go off in his head and say, uh-huh. And then he might simply say to you, let me be honest with you. I appreciate your answering your question, but your need is not for me. I'm going to refer you to see a now wait, let me, let me say something quickly. People get a little scared up on this point. Oh Lord, doctor, am I losing my mind? No, I am not referring you necessarily to a psychiatrist because if your mind is active and sound, you have need, really need a psychotherapist. Uh, one who is clinically trained and competent and experienced to help you to ascertain the effects that your social, your marital, your parental work is having on you because it throws off your body function. That's, by the way, is what I was alluding to when I mentioned psychosomatic health. Psycho mm -hmm. means the mind. Soma from body. Greek refers to the body. Now, the, because the mind is the engine of the being, it can throw off your entire function. Therefore, the challenge we have is that too often, when persons are not feeling well in their body, and if the medical tests prove negative, and if the doctor talks with some persons, I'm generalizing here, by the way, oh, you're too depressed, you're too stressed, 